Hey, what's up? Today I'm going to be talking about the auto sampler and how to create patches from your instruments. Let's say you want to share an instrument with another collaborator and they don't have it, or you want to use it on a different computer or system and you don't want to worry about either compatibility issues or licensing. You can use an auto sampler to rip a preset, in a sense, from any uh, patch that you like. So right here, I have a paid VST that other people wouldn't necessarily have. And let's say I'm collaborating on a project with a buddy of mine. I can take this sound and auto sample it so that they can use it whenever we are collaborating on a project. Let's say they're making adjustments to the MIDI, the melody, or some of our phrasing. It'll be a little bit easier than them purchasing an entire license of this VST. So first, we're going to open up the auto sampler in the audio effects track. Then we're going to change a few things. First, I'm going to select the range of the nodes that I want and how often I want the nodes to be sampled. If you change the range to every other or every few nodes, what the auto sampler will do is cr create what it thinks should go between the nodes or interpolate using an algorithm, what the next note should sound like instead of sampling each individual note. However, for my use case, I think it's better to sample each note. This will take a little bit longer, but I think the result will sound better. Next, I want to determine what kind of sound I have. So let's take a listen. This one's a short plucky sound, so I don't need to worry about looping. So I'm gonna leave this on off for now. Next, I'm going to change my sustain. The release of this instrument is pretty short, so I'm going to change this down to like maybe one second. So it's going to listen to each note that is selected and then trim off any silence afterwards. Now, next, for velocity layers, I only intend to record one level of velocity, i.e. the hardest press instead of having any dynamic range between soft presses and hard presses. So I'm going to leave this alone. If you wanted to have more nuance, what you can do is mess around with the different algorithms for how soft and hard is interpreted and how many velocity layers you want. However, doing so will result in having more recordings of each individual note, which can increase export times and file size. Although the file size of the .exs format isn't very big to begin with, so take that with a grain of salt. So now that I set my sustain and I don't need any loop, we can go ahead and change the range of the notes. For my project file, hypothetically, I'm only going to be using this instrument within a couple of octaves, and we're going to give all of the notes just in case if we decide to change the key later on in the project. Next, I'm going to hit sample, create the name for my preset, and hit start. What it will do then is go ahead and sample each and every note that I have selected within that range, and then create a multi-sampler preset from that. I'm going to hit cancel in this case because uh, this is just a demo, but then we'll move on to what it will sound like for a loop sound. So this preset right here, has a much longer sustain and release. And let's say I want to keep that characteristic in the export. Well, there's a couple options we can do. First, I can select the auto loop to the Penrose machine. Again, I don't have any need to change the velocity or velocity layers or velocity sensitivity. So I'm gonna leave that the same. And I still want the same level of detail in my uh, recordings of each note and my range, I'm going to keep the same. So next, I'm going to change my auto loop to Penrose machine. In my opinion, that is the best um, algorithm used for looping in the auto sampler. However, you can be met with some weird or interesting artifacts, which can be solved by going to the search version. Now, if you do use the search uh, algorithm, I would recommend changing the sustain to a little bit longer. For example, this one's five seconds. I think you can get a good amount of uh, character 
that you find inside the synthesizer for five seconds. Although using the search function, I'd recommend doubling it to maybe about 10 seconds just to give yourself more room. So let's go back to five seconds. Right now I'm gonna keep my auto loop start and auto loop end about at a 40% to 90% range. This is the range that I have found works best for me from the settings I like to use because it looks for the loop point a little bit later and it looks for the close end of the loop point also a little bit later. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit sample for this so you can see what the Penrose uh, machine algorithm does and where it finds the loop points. Let's go ahead and create a name for this. It doesn't matter what I do, but I'm just going to leave it right here in the folder. Now, as you can see, it basically records each individual note and goes throughout the scales until it gets to the end of your selection. To view or listen to or even play the instrument that you just created, you're going to want to create an instrument track and open up the multi sampler instrument. Next, you're going to want to go down to your drop down menu of auto sampled and select a preset that you've created. So I have a few folders I have made in this auto sampler sampled subfolder just to demonstrate some of the things that you can do with the sampler. So here, for example, I have a preset that I have made using the auto sampler from an instrument. And what it will do is assign a note to each individual uh, part of the map that I have selected. So this will work just about the same for all of your instruments. And it gives you a lot of parameters that you can change after the fact. For example, the envelope amplitude, the uh, filter amplitude for the envelope, and so on and so forth. I hope this helps and I hope you have a good one.